Question 1. What does the right lane must turn right sign indicate for drivers in the right lane? A. They must prepare to stop. B. They must turn right. C. They can turn right or go straight. Answer. B. They must turn right. The right lane must turn right sign indicates that drivers in the right lane are required to turn right. Question 2. When you see a men at work sign, what should you do? A. Increase your speed to pass the area quickly. B. Continue at your normal speed. C. Slow down and proceed with caution. Answer. C. Slow down and proceed with caution. A men at work sign indicates a construction zone ahead, so drivers should slow down and be cautious. Question 3. What is the legal implication of a no turn on red sign? A. You can turn right on red after stopping. B. You must wait for the green light to turn right. C. You can turn left on red. Answer. B. You must wait for the green light to turn right. The no turn on red sign means turning right on a red light is prohibited. Question 4. What does a no parking sign mean? A. You can park for a limited time. B. Parking is prohibited. C. You can park if you stay in the car. Answer. B. Parking is prohibited. A no parking sign means that stopping and leaving your vehicle in this area is not allowed. Question 5. How should you respond when you see a signal ahead sign? A. Prepare to increase your speed. B. Be ready to stop at the upcoming traffic signal. C. Ignore the sign as it's just informational. Answer. B. Be ready to stop at the upcoming traffic signal. The signal ahead sign warns of a traffic signal ahead, so drivers should be prepared to stop. Question 6. What precautions should you take upon seeing a steep road sign? A. Speed up to maintain momentum. B. Shift to a lower gear and proceed with caution. C. Ignore the sign as it is not important. Answer. B. Shift to a lower gear and proceed with caution. A steep road sign indicates a steep incline or decline, so using a lower gear helps maintain control. Question 7. What should a driver be aware of when approaching a hospital sign? A. Increase speed to pass the area quickly. B. Watch for ambulances and pedestrians. C. Hospitals are usually closed at night. Answer. B. Watch for ambulances and pedestrians. The hospital sign indicates proximity to a hospital, so expect increased pedestrian and emergency vehicle activity. Question 8. What does the turning traffic must yield to pedestrian sign imply for drivers making a turn? A. Pedestrians have the right of way. B. Drivers should honk to alert pedestrians. C. Pedestrians should yield to vehicles. Answer. A. Pedestrians have the right of way. This sign means drivers must yield to pedestrians when turning. Question 9. Explain how to navigate an intersection with a dulled lane, left turn only, and straight lane, no U-turn sign. A. Make a U-turn if you're in the left lane. B. You can go straight or turn left from the straight lane. C. The left lane is for left turns only, and the straight lane does not allow U-turns. Answer. C. The left lane is for left turns only, and the straight lane does not allow U-turns. This sign indicates specific lane usage at an intersection. Question 10. If you are in a lane marked with a right lane must exit sign, what are your options? A. You can continue straight or exit. B. You must exit. C. You can switch lanes to avoid exiting. Answer. B. You must exit. The right lane must exit sign indicates that vehicles in the right lane are required to take the exit. Question 11. What should you be cautious of when you see a four-track sign near a railway crossing? A. Expect multiple tracks and be prepared to stop. B. The sign is informational and requires no action. C. You should speed up when crossing the tracks. Answer. A. Expect multiple tracks and be prepared to stop. The four-track sign warns of multiple railway tracks, requiring extra caution. Question 12. 
Who is allowed to park in a spot marked with a handicapped parking sign? A. Anyone can park for a short time. B. Only vehicles with a disabled placard or license plate. C. Senior citizens. Answer. B. Only vehicles with a disabled placard or license plate. Handicapped parking spots are reserved for vehicles with the appropriate permit. Question 13. How should you adjust your driving when encountering a road narrow sign? A. Speed up to pass the narrow section quickly. B. Prepare for reduced lane width and proceed with caution. C. The sign has no impact on driving. Answer. B. Prepare for reduced lane width and proceed with caution. A road narrow sign indicates that the road ahead will have less width, requiring careful driving. Question 14. What action should you take upon seeing a road work ahead sign? A. Speed up to pass the area quickly. B. Continue at the same speed. C. Slow down and be prepared for construction conditions. Answer. C. Slow down and be prepared for construction conditions. The road work ahead sign indicates upcoming road work, requiring reduced speed and increased awareness. Question 15. What does a rough road sign indicate, and how should you adjust your driving? A. The road ahead is smooth. B. Drive faster to minimize discomfort. C. Slow down due to potentially uneven or damaged road surfaces. Answer. C. Slow down due to potentially uneven or damaged road surfaces. A rough road sign warns of uneven road conditions ahead, necessitating slower speeds for safety. Question 16. What should you do when you encounter a lane-closed sign? A. Ignore the sign and stay in your lane. B. Prepare to merge into an open lane in a safe and timely manner. C. Speed up to pass the closed lane quickly. Answer. B. Prepare to merge into an open lane in a safe and timely manner. A lane closed sign means you must merge due to a lane closure ahead. Question 17. How should you proceed when you see a pavement end sign? A. Maintain your speed as the road condition will not change. B. Prepare for a transition from pavement to gravel or dirt and adjust speed accordingly. C. The sign is for informational purposes only. Answer. B. Prepare for a transition from pavement to gravel or dirt and adjust speed accordingly. The pavement ends sign warns of a change in road surface. Question 18. What does the left turn or U turn only on green sign indicate about making turns? A. Turns are allowed any time. B. Left turns and U-turns are only allowed on a green signal. C. You must always turn left at this signal. Answer. B. Left turns and U-turns are only allowed on a green signal. This sign restricts these turns to periods when the signal is green. Question 19. What does a soft shoulder sign mean, and how should it affect your driving? A. The shoulder is suitable for driving. B. The shoulder is reinforced for heavy vehicles. C. The shoulder may not support a vehicle, so stay on the paved road. Answer. C. The shoulder may not support a vehicle, so stay on the paved road. A soft shoulder sign indicates that the road shoulder is unpaved or potentially unstable. Question 20. When approaching a camping area sign, what should drivers be prepared for? A. Increased speed limits. B. Pedestrians and slow-moving vehicles. C. The road will end. Answer. B. Pedestrians and slow-moving vehicles. Near camping areas, expect more pedestrian traffic and vehicles that may be entering or exiting the area. Question 21. When approaching an intersection, what is the appropriate action if the traffic light is red but turns green as you near it? A. Continue at the same speed. B. Stop at the intersection to ensure it's safe. C. Speed up to cross the intersection quickly. Answer. A. Continue at the same speed. If the light turns green as you approach, you should continue at the same speed and cross the intersection if it's safe. Question 22. In a residential area, what is the default speed limit if not otherwise posted? A. 
25 miles per hour, B, 35 miles per hour, C, 45 miles per hour. Answer, A, 25 miles per hour. The default speed limit in residential areas in California is 25 miles per hour if not otherwise posted. Question 23. How should you react if an emergency vehicle with flashing lights approaches while you are in an intersection? A. Continue through the intersection, then pull over. B. Stop in the intersection until the vehicle passes. C. Speed up to clear the intersection quickly. Answer. A. Continue through the intersection, then pull over, safely clear the intersection, and then pull over to allow the emergency vehicle to pass. Question 24. What is the correct procedure for making a left turn onto a one-way street with two lanes? A. Turn into either lane of the one-way street. B. Turn into the left lane only. C. Turn into the right lane only. Answer. A. Turn into either lane of the one-way street. When turning left onto a one-way street, you may turn into either lane if safe to do so. Question 25. In a situation where your vehicle starts hydroplaning, what is the safest response? A. Accelerate to gain traction. B. Brake hard to stop the vehicle. C. Ease off the gas and steer straight or slightly in the direction you want to go. Answer. C. Ease off the gas and steer straight or slightly in the direction you want to go. This helps regain control when hydroplaning. Question 26. How far should you stop behind a school bus with flashing red lights? A. At least 25 feet away. B. At least 100 feet away. C. At least 10 feet away. Answer. A. At least 25 feet away. You must stop at least 25 feet away from a school bus with flashing red lights. Question 27. What is the legal blood alcohol concentration? Basie. Limit for drivers over 21 in California. A. 0. 5%. B. 0. 8%. C. 0. 10%. Answer. B. 0. 8%. The legal base limit for drivers over 21 in California is 0, 8%. Question 28. When are you required to yield the right of way to a pedestrian at a crosswalk? A. Only when the pedestrian is on the same side of the road. B. At all times. C. Only when the pedestrian signals. Answer. B. At all times. Drivers must yield the right of way to pedestrians at crosswalks at all times. Question 29. What should you do if you approach a four-way stop at the same time as another vehicle? A. The vehicle on the left should go first. B. The vehicle on the right should go first. C. The first vehicle to stop should go first. Answer. B. The vehicle on the right should go first. At a four-way stop, the vehicle to the right has the right of way. Question 30. How can you safely navigate through a roundabout or traffic circle? A. Yield to traffic in the roundabout, then enter when safe. B. Enter without yielding and find a gap in traffic. C. Stop in the roundabout to let cars enter. Answer. A. Yield to traffic in the roundabout, then enter when safe. Always yield to traffic already in the roundabout. Question 31. What actions should you take if your vehicle's brakes fail while driving? A. Pump the brake pedal quickly and firmly. B. Use the handbrake while maintaining a straight path. C. Continue driving to the nearest mechanic. Answer. A. Pump the brake pedal quickly and firmly. This may build up enough pressure to stop the vehicle. Question 32. How should you react if you accidentally pass your intended exit on a highway? A. Make a U-turn immediately. B. Continue to the next exit. C. Stop and reverse to the exit. Answer. B. Continue to the next exit. If you miss your exit, continue to the next one. Do not stop or reverse on the highway. Question 33. What are the rules for using a carpool lane on a California highway? A. Only vehicles with two or more occupants can use it. B. 
Any vehicle can use it regardless of occupancy. C. Only electric vehicles can use it. Answer. A. Only vehicles with two or more occupants can use it. Carpool lanes are reserved for vehicles with multiple occupants. Question 34. How should you adjust your driving in foggy conditions? A. Use high beam headlights. B. Use low beam headlights and reduce speed. C. Turn off your headlights. Answer. B. Use low beam headlights and reduce speed. High beams can reflect off the fog and impair visibility. Question 35. What is the correct response if you experience a tire blowout while driving? A. Brake hard and immediately steer towards the shoulder. B. Maintain your lane and slowly reduce speed. C. Accelerate to gain control. Answer. B. Maintain your lane and slowly reduce speed. This helps maintain control and prevent a crash. Question 36. In California, under what circumstances can you legally use a handheld mobile phone while driving? A. Only when using a GPS navigation system. B. In any situation as long as it's brief. C. In case of emergency or if you are an emergency service professional. Answer. C. In case of emergency or if you are an emergency service professional. California law restricts handheld phone use while driving, except in emergencies. Question 37. How much following distance should you maintain from the vehicle ahead in normal driving conditions? A. 2 seconds. B. 3 seconds. C. 1 second. Answer. B. 3 seconds. A 3 second following distance is recommended for safety in normal driving conditions. Question 38. What should you do if you're involved in a minor traffic collision with no injuries? A. Leave the scene immediately. B. Move the vehicles out of traffic if possible and exchange information. C. Wait for the police to arrive before doing anything. Answer. B. Move the vehicles out of traffic if possible and exchange information. This helps prevent further incidents and facilitates the exchange of necessary details. Question 39. What are the consequences of refusing a breathalyzer test when suspected of DUI in California? A. Mandatory license suspension. B. A warning will be issued. C. There are no consequences. Answer. A. Mandatory license suspension. Refusing a breathalyzer test can lead to license suspension under California's implied consent law. Question 40. What is the recommended action if you become drowsy while driving on a long trip? A. Open the window for fresh air. B. Stop and take a rest or switch drivers. C. Turn up the radio to stay awake. Answer. B. Stop and take a rest or switch drivers. It's important to avoid driving while drowsy to prevent accidents. Question 41. When driving in heavy traffic, what is the recommended strategy for changing lanes? A. Change lanes abruptly to secure a space. B. Signal your intentions and change lanes slowly and carefully. C. Honk to alert other drivers and then change lanes. Answer. B. Signal your intentions and change lanes slowly and carefully. This ensures safety and clear communication with other drivers. Question 42. What is the legal requirement for child safety seats in California? A. Children under 8 years old must use a safety seat. B. Only infants need a safety seat. C. Safety seats are optional for children. Answer. A. Children under 8 years old must use a safety seat. California law requires child safety seats for children under 8 years old or under 4 9 tall. Question 43. How should you proceed when you encounter a flashing yellow traffic light at an intersection? A. Stop completely before proceeding. B. Proceed with caution without stopping. C. The light is malfunctioning. Treat it as a stop sign. Answer. B. Proceed with caution without stopping. A flashing yellow light means slow down and proceed with caution. Question 44. What does a solid white line on the road indicate, particularly on highways? A. 
it indicates a pedestrian crossing area. B. It separates lanes of traffic moving in the same direction. C. It separates lanes of traffic moving in opposite directions. Answer. B. It separates lanes of traffic moving in the same direction. Solid white lines typically mark the right edge of the roadway or separate lanes of traffic moving in the same direction. Question 45. What steps should you take if your vehicle begins to skid on a wet road? A. Steer in the opposite direction of the skid. B. Brake hard and immediately. C. Steer in the direction you want the vehicle to go. Answer. C. Steer in the direction you want the vehicle to go. This helps to regain control during a skid. Question 46. When is it legal to make a U-turn in a residential area in California? A. Anytime, as long as the way is clear. B. When no vehicles are approaching for 200 feet. C. Only at intersections with a U-turn lane. Answer. B. When no vehicles are approaching for 200 feet. U-turns are allowed in residential areas if the road is clear for 200 feet in both directions. Question 47. What is the proper way to use your vehicle's headlights when driving at night in a densely populated area? A. Use high beams for better visibility. B. Use low beams to avoid blinding other drivers. C. Headlights are not necessary in well-lit areas. Answer. B. Use low beams to avoid blinding other drivers. In densely populated areas, low beams provide sufficient visibility without impairing other drivers. Question 48. What precautions should you take when driving near a school zone? A. Drive at the posted speed limit. B. Expect increased pedestrian traffic and slow down. C. School zones have no special rules. Answer. B. Expect increased pedestrian traffic and slow down. Extra caution is needed in school zones due to the presence of children. Question 49. In case of a mechanical breakdown, what safety measures should you follow? A. Stop in your current lane and wait for help. B. Move to the shoulder or a safe area and signal distress. C. Keep driving to the nearest mechanic. Answer. B. Move to the shoulder or a safe area and signal distress. It's safest to get out of traffic and then signal for assistance. Question 50. How should you respond to an uncontrolled intersection? one without signs or signals. A. Proceed with the right-of-way. B. Slow down and yield to any vehicle already in the intersection. C. Speed up to cross quickly. Answer. B. Slow down and yield to any vehicle already in the intersection. At an uncontrolled intersection, yield to vehicles that arrived first or are already crossing. Question 51. What is the three-second rule? and how do you use it while driving? A. It's the time you should wait at a stop sign. B. It's the minimum safe following distance from the car in front. C. It's the time to wait before turning at a green light. Answer. B. It's the minimum safe following distance from the car in front. The three-second rule helps maintain a safe following distance at any speed. Question 52. How do you determine the right-of-way at a T-intersection. A. Vehicles on the through road have the right-of-way. B. Vehicles on the terminating road have the right-of-way. C. Right-of-way is determined by vehicle size. Answer. A. Vehicles on the through road have the right-of-way. At a T-intersection, the vehicles on the through road have priority. Question 53. What should you do if you are being tailgated by another vehicle? A. Break sharply to discourage the tailgater. B. Increase your speed. C. Move over to allow the tailgater to pass, if possible. Answer. C. Move over to allow the tailgater to pass, if possible. It's safer to let an aggressive driver pass than to escalate the situation. Question 54. When parallel parking, what is the correct procedure to ensure safety and compliance with traffic laws? A. Park within 18 inches of the curb. B. Park at least 3 feet away from the curb. C. Park diagonally to the curb. Answer. A. 
park within 18 inches of the curb. This ensures safe passage for other vehicles and complies with most local parking regulations. Question 55. What are the rules regarding passing bicycles on the road in California? A. Maintain a distance of at least 3 feet. B. Bicycles should always yield to cars. C. Honk to alert the bicyclist before passing. Answer. A. Maintain a distance of at least 3 feet. When passing a bicycle, keep a safe distance of at least 3 feet to ensure the cyclist's safety. Question 56. What steps should you take if you are involved in a hit-and-run incident? A. Chase the fleeing vehicle. B. Stop, call the police, and gather information from witnesses. C. Leave the scene if there's minimal damage. Answer. B. Stop, call the police, and gather information from witnesses. This helps in the investigation and insurance claims process. Question 57. How should you react if you encounter wildlife crossing the road while driving? A. Speed up to scare the animals away. B. Slow down or stop to allow them to cross safely. C. Honk continuously until they move. Answer. B. Slow down or stop to allow them to cross safely. This prevents accidents and ensures the safety of the animals. Question 58. What is the correct way to approach a blind intersection? A. Drive through quickly to minimize time in the intersection. B. Slow down, sound your horn, and proceed with caution. C. Stop completely, then accelerate rapidly. Answer. B. Slow down, sound your horn, and proceed with caution. This helps alert other drivers and pedestrians of your approach. Question 59. What are the specific rules for driving in a carpool lane during its restricted hours? A. Any vehicle can use the carpool lane. B. Only vehicles with two or more occupants or qualifying low-emission vehicles. C. Only motorcycles and buses. Answer. B. Only vehicles with two or more occupants or qualifying low-emission vehicles can use the carpool lane during restricted hours. Question 60. How should you handle a situation where you are driving on a multi-lane road and an emergency vehicle is approaching from behind? A. Maintain your speed and direction. B. Pull over to the right and stop. C. Move to the left lane and slow down. Answer. B. Pull over to the right and stop. This allows the emergency vehicle to pass safely. Question 61. What actions should you take when approaching a railroad crossing with flashing lights but no barrier? A. Speed up to cross before the train arrives. B. Stop, look both ways, and proceed with caution if clear. C. Ignore the lights if no train is visible. Answer. B. Stop, look both ways, and proceed with caution if clear. Flashing lights at a railroad crossing are a warning to stop and check for oncoming trains before proceeding. Question 62. How should you react to a school bus with its stop arm extended and red lights flashing? A. Continue driving if you're on the opposite side of a divided highway. B. Stop regardless of your direction of travel. C. Pass the bus with caution. Answer. A. Continue driving if you're on the opposite side of a divided highway. In California, if you're on the opposite side of a divided or multilane highway, you can proceed with caution. Question 63. What is the correct procedure when merging onto a freeway in California? A. Stop at the end of the ramp to wait for an opening. B. Merge at the speed of traffic and signal your intentions. C. Enter the freeway at a much slower speed than traffic. Answer. B. Merge at the speed of traffic and signal your intentions. This helps you safely integrate into the flow of traffic. Question 64. How should you adjust your driving in response to a share the road sign with bicycles? A. Always give bicycles the right of way. B. Be extra cautious and allow at least three feet of clearance when passing bicycles. C. Ignore the sign as it's just a suggestion. Answer. B. Be extra cautious and allow at least three feet of clearance when passing bicycles.
The sign indicates that drivers should be vigilant and share the road safely with cyclists. Question 65. When is it required to stop for a school bus on a divided highway? A. Always, regardless of the type of highway. B. Only if you are on the same side as the bus. C. Never, as the highway is divided. Answer. B. Only if you are on the same side as the bus. On a divided highway, you need to stop for a school bus with flashing lights only if you're on the same side. Question 66. What is the legal speed limit in a school zone when children are present? A. 15 miles per hour. B. 25 miles per hour. C. 35 miles per hour. Answer. B. 25 miles per hour. The legal speed limit in a school zone when children are present is typically 25 miles per hour, unless otherwise posted. Question 67. How do you handle a situation where multiple cars arrive at a stop sign at different times? A. The car to the right goes first. B. The first car to stop goes first. C. The largest vehicle goes first. Answer. B. The first car to stop goes first. At a stop sign, the rule is first come, first served. Question 68. What should you do if your accelerator sticks while you're driving? A. Keep pumping the gas pedal. B. Turn off your engine immediately. C. Shift to neutral and apply the brakes. Answer. C. Shift to neutral and apply the brakes. This allows you to safely slow down and control the vehicle. Question 69. What is the rule regarding stopping for a pedestrian at a crosswalk without traffic signals? A. Only stop if the pedestrian is on your side of the road. B. You are not required to stop. C. Stop and give the pedestrian the right of way. Answer. C. Stop and give the pedestrian the right of way. Drivers must always yield to pedestrians at crosswalks without traffic signals. Question 70. How much space should you leave when parking next to a curb? A. At least 2 feet. B. No more than 18 inches. C. Exactly 1 foot. Answer. B. No more than 18 inches. When parking next to a curb, your vehicle should be no more than 18 inches from the curb. Question 71. When are you allowed to cross a double yellow line while driving? A. To pass a slow-moving vehicle. B. When turning left into a driveway or side street. C. Never. It's always illegal. Answer. B. When turning left into a driveway or side street, crossing a double yellow line is permitted when making a left turn into a driveway, side street, or business. Question 72. What is the proper action if an ambulance with flashing lights and siren is approaching from the opposite direction? A. Continue driving as normal. B. Pull to the right and stop. C. Move to the left and slow down. Answer. B. Pull to the right and stop. Even if the ambulance is on the opposite side, it's safest to pull to the right and stop to allow it to pass. Question 73. How do you safely navigate through a tunnel or underpass? A. Increase your speed to minimize time in the tunnel. B. Turn on your headlights and reduce your speed. C. Keep your headlights off to avoid glare. Answer. B. Turn on your headlights and reduce your speed. This improves visibility and safety in tunnels and underpasses. Question 74. What should you do if you are approached by an emergency vehicle while stopped at a red light? A. Proceed through the red light carefully. B. Stay where you are. C. Pull to the right as soon as it's safe, even if it means crossing the intersection. Answer. C. Pull to the right as soon as it's safe, even if it means crossing the intersection. Make room for the emergency vehicle while ensuring your actions are safe. Question 75. How should you position your vehicle's wheels when parking uphill without a curb? A. Turn them away from the street. B. Keep them straight. C. Turn them towards the street. Answer. A. Turn them away from the street. This prevents the car from rolling into traffic if the brakes fail. Question 76. 
When is it necessary to use your vehicle's high beam headlights? A. In urban areas with well-lit streets. B. On open highways or in rural areas without other traffic. C. When there is oncoming traffic. Answer. B. On open highways or in rural areas without other traffic. High beams should be used for better visibility in these conditions, but turned off when other vehicles are nearby. Question 77. What is the safe following distance in rainy or wet road conditions? A. 2 seconds. B. 4 seconds. C. 6 seconds. Answer. B. 4 seconds. In wet conditions, increase your following distance to at least 4 seconds for added safety. Question 78. How should you react if a traffic light turns yellow as you approach an intersection? A. Speed up to beat the red light. B. Stop if it is safe to do so. C. Continue at the same speed. Answer. B. Stop if it is safe to do so. A yellow light means to prepare to stop, not to speed up. Question 79. What precautions should you take when driving on a road with loose gravel? A. Speed up to reduce the amount of gravel hitting your vehicle. B. Maintain a normal speed. C. Slow down to prevent skidding. Answer. C. Slow down to prevent skidding. Loose gravel can reduce traction and increase the likelihood of losing control. Question 80. What are the guidelines for turning right on a red light in California? A. It's always allowed without stopping. B. Stop first and proceed when safe and there is no sign prohibiting it. C. Never allowed under any circumstances. Answer. B. Stop first and proceed when safe and there is no sign prohibiting it. Right turns on red are allowed after a complete stop, unless a sign says otherwise. Question 81. What should you do before backing out of a parking space in a crowded lot? A. Check your mirrors and blind spots for pedestrians and other vehicles. B. Honk to alert nearby pedestrians and vehicles. C. Back out quickly to minimize the time spent in the lot. Answer. A. Check your mirrors and blind spots for pedestrians and other vehicles. It's important to be aware of your surroundings to avoid accidents. Question 82. How do you handle a situation where a traffic signal is out of order at an intersection? A. Treat the intersection as a four-way stop. B. The first vehicle to arrive has the right of way. C. Proceed with caution without stopping. Answer. A. Treat the intersection as a four-way stop. When traffic signals are out, treat the intersection as if it's controlled by stop signs from all directions. Question 83. What is the correct response to an oncoming vehicle at night with high beams that make it hard to see? A. Flash your high beams back at the vehicle. B. Focus on the right edge of your lane and avoid looking directly at the high beams. C. Turn on your high beams to improve your visibility. Answer. B. Focus on the right edge of your lane and avoid looking directly at the high beams. This helps maintain your visibility without being blinded. Question 84. When are you legally obligated to yield to public transit vehicles in California? A. Only when they are merging back into traffic from a stop. B. At all times, regardless of the situation. C. Never, as they must yield to regular traffic. Answer. A. Only when they are merging back into traffic from a stop. Drivers should yield to allow public transit buses to merge safely. Question 85. How should you proceed when making a left turn at an intersection with no traffic lights? A. Yield to all oncoming traffic before turning. B. Turn immediately without waiting. C. Honk to alert oncoming traffic. Answer. A. Yield to all oncoming traffic before turning. Ensuring the way is clear and safe before turning is crucial. Question 86. What are the rules for parking on a hill with a curb? A. Turn your wheels away from the curb. B. Turn your wheels towards the curb. C. Keep your wheels straight. Answer. B. Turn your wheels towards the curb. This prevents the car from rolling into the street if the brakes fail.
Question 87. How should you adjust your driving during times when children are going to or leaving school? A. Drive at the regular speed limit. B. Increase your speed to clear the area quickly. C. Slow down and watch for children crossing the street. Answer. C. Slow down and watch for children crossing the street. Extra caution is needed when children are likely to be present. Question 88. What steps should you take if your rearview mirror indicates a fast approaching vehicle? A. Maintain your speed and lane position. B. Speed up to match the approaching vehicle's speed. C. Swerve to the side to avoid being hit. Answer. A. Maintain your speed and lane position. Stay calm and allow the vehicle to pass when it's safe. Question 89. What is the minimum legal following distance in California? A. 2 seconds. B. 3 seconds. C. 4 seconds. Answer. B. 3 seconds. A 3 second following distance is the minimum recommended to allow for safe stopping and reaction times. Question 90. How should you respond if your view is blocked at a crosswalk? A. Proceed slowly until you can see clearly. B. Honk to warn pedestrians. C. Stop and look both ways before proceeding. Answer. C. Stop and look both ways before proceeding. Ensure the crosswalk is clear before moving through. Question 91. What actions are required if you are involved in an accident resulting in property damage? A. Leave the scene immediately. B. Exchange insurance information with the other party. C. Wait for police to file a report before leaving. Answer. B. Exchange insurance information with the other party. It's important to exchange details for insurance purposes. Question 92. How should you position your hands on the steering wheel for optimal control? A. At the 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock positions. B. At the 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock positions. C. At the 8 o'clock and 4 o'clock positions. Answer. B. At the 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock positions. This position offers the most control and reduces fatigue. Question 93. What is the correct action when approaching a bicyclist from behind on a narrow road? A. Honk to alert the bicyclist and pass closely. B. Slow down and pass with at least three feet of clearance. C. The bicyclist should move off the road to let you pass. Answer. B. Slow down and pass with at least three feet of clearance. Always give cyclists enough space to ensure their safety. Question 94. How do you safely navigate a freeway exit with a sharp bend? A. Maintain your speed until you're off the exit. B. Slow down before entering the exit. C. Speed up to clear the exit quickly. Answer. B. Slow down before entering the exit. Reducing speed helps navigate sharp bends safely. Question 95. What are the responsibilities of a driver when approaching a crosswalk with pedestrians waiting to cross? A. Speed up to cross before the pedestrians. B. Stop and give the pedestrians the right of way. C. The pedestrians should wait for the car to pass. Answer. B. Stop and give the pedestrians the right of way. Drivers must always yield to pedestrians at crosswalks. 